The pipe organ is an enigmatic musical monument combining art and engineering. History. Although the organ has been part of our history for 2,000 years, it is wrongly associated only to the world of church music. This instrument was invented by the Greek engineer Ctesibius of Alexandria in 275 before Christ. This primordial instrument was originally called hydrolis and was powered by a system of water tanks which were linked together and allowed the flow of air to go through them gradually. In the beginning, the hydrolis wasn't thought as a musical instrument, but as a vehicle to promote scientific discoveries which could demonstrate the huge possibilities of the hydraulic engineering. Romans were the first ones to understand its potential as a musical instrument. Once they imported it to Rome, they started to largely use it as a musical element in theatres, in sport competitions and in the arenas. During the 5th century after Christ, after the barbarian invasions, there cannot be found any track of the organ in the West, whereas it kept to be used in the imperial Byzantine ceremonies and celebrations. The organ was reintroduced in the Western musical scene completely by chance, when the Byzantine emperor Constantine V sent an organ as a gift to Pippin the Short, King of the Franks, in 757 after Christ. Pippin placed the instrument in the St. Canalius Church in Compagne. From that moment, the organ started its rapid expansion, accompanying the Mass in Christian churches. Functioning How does an organ work? The pipe organ is a wind instrument. The sound is produced by the flow of air that goes through it. The notes are actually created by changing flow of air controlled by specific devices, which we are now going to analyze in detail. The console is the contraposition of the instrument and is made of the keyboard, the pedal board and the stops. An organ may count up to six keyboards. Multiple keyboards allow the organist to switch instantly from one timbre to another during the performance. Have you ever heard the saying to play with the feet? It usually means that the musician is not good at playing. However, if you talk about playing the organ, it can mean exactly the opposite. In order to play the organ, feet are fundamental. The pedal board is placed at the bottom of the console. It is an actual keyboard made of long wooden bars. Depending on the organ dimensions, a pedal board can have from 12 to 32 pedals. The biggest pipes of the instrument, the ones making the lowest sounding, are linked to the pedal board. On either side of the keyboards, there are the stop controls. Each stop activates a series of pipes corresponding to a single timbre. The number of stops can vary considerably depending on the dimension of the organ as well as on its constructive complexity. A small organ can have three or four stops. The biggest organ in the world, in Atlantic City, has 337 stops. Every stop has a name depending on the timbre produced by the pipes. For the example, flute, trumpet and so on. We will now listen to the same chord Played on different stops to better understand the difference. The wind chest is the very heart of a pipe organ. It is an airtight box that transmits the wind to the pipes. On the upper part of the wind chest, there are rows of holes where the pipes are installed. Each row corresponds to a timber, which can be opened and closed through the stop. The key action is a complex mechanism made of levers and sliders that are used to link the console to the wind chest, allowing the pipe's activation. The pipes are responsible for producing the sound. They can be made of metal or wood. Usually metal is used for the principal pipes or for the pipes that sound like a trumpet, 
a horn, an oboe, a viola, etc. Wood is used to obtain a sound similar to flutes, drones and other instruments. Not all types of wood can be used to make the pipes. The most commonly used types of wood are the so-called hardwood, such as oak, walnut, chestnut, cherry, pine and fir. This material are ideal for building the pipes because they have excellent sound vibrations, they are solid and waterproof. There are two basic types of organ pipes that produce the sound in different ways, flue and reed pipes. The flue pipes, also called labial pipes, work exactly as a flute. When the air is blown in, it swirls around the lip, causing a vibration. The reed pipes, on the other hand, are sounded by a vibrating metal tongue which moves the air and produces the sound. Therefore, the timbre and volume of the sound a pipe will produce depend on its shape, dimension and material. Finally, the bellows supply the organ with a constant flow of air. They usually have the shape of a wedge, similar to an accordion, which collect the air lifting on a side, and then they gradually release it. On traditional pipe organs, the number of bellows depended on the dimension of the organ itself. The bigger the organ was, the higher was the number of bellows required to power the instrument. The constant flow of air was assured by the calcant, a person operating a set of bellows during the performance. It is said that during his organ concerts, Johann Sebastian Bach would require 16 calcants. With the electricity, this figure was replaced by an electric blower pumping the air into the bellow, providing a constant flow of air to the organ. All these elements led to the creation of an endless variety of organs. From the portable ones to the monumental organs. Despite the technological progress, the organ remains an instrument strongly linked to the tradition and to the mastery of artisans, who have helped improve the instrument thanks to their simple and genius intuitions. This instrument, combining artistic potential and engineering knowledge, found in Le Marche a breeding ground with examples of great value which are distributed all over Italy. Unfortunately, this regional heritage can often be found in the basement of our theatres, churches and museums, waiting to be discovered again. <laughs>